Have you ever wondered what we can find on our Singapore shores? This is Marie Treasure Hunt Part 3. Whee! So the reason why we are here today is because it's one of the lowest tide of the month. In Singapore, good low tide timings occur between the months of April to August. So you can find like pockets of really very low tides and this is when the sea is super exposed and that's called the intertidal zone. And the wind is like around one hour, so this is the, like, this is the crucial moment where you can actually explore and find a lot of cool animals. Why are there so many birds on the beach today? Because now that the tide has receded, everything's exposed, so they probably can find tiny little crustaceans here where they be opportunists and they're going to eat it. Going to the patch of seagrass where you will find more soft-bodied animals because yeah, the area is more protective and compared to like rocky shores. So there's usually like sandy area, the rocky area and then the seagrass area. Okay, every day in Singapore, we actually experience two high tides and two low tides. But the height of the tides and then timing of the tides differ every single day. And that's because tides, they are affected by three factors. The gravitational pull of the moon, the gravitational pull of the sun and also the rotation of the earth. So the tide is uh, actually it's at the lowest point right now. So it will move every like five minutes or so and then they will stay a while. And then after it reaches the lowest point, it will come back again slowly. This is a window pane shell and what's interesting is there's a little community living here. There are barnacles here and then there's like tiny little snail which I think is actually parasitic. And then there's like tiny sea anemones here. Can you see the blue thing? Shall I put it back? Back to where it belongs. It's a giant harm. No, I same family, but not the one that we eat. Uh, they have hemoglobin in their system, which is what gives our blood the red colour. They live in like muddy and oxygen poor areas, so the hemoglobin will help them actually capture oxygen more efficiently. So during this intertidal period, all the animals that will be exposed to the elements, they have to develop special adaptations. Animals such as crab, the shell ones, they're usually quite fine. So the crabs will just hide in small other crevices in rocks, in shells, and they just hide there. For clams and other shell-like creatures, mollas, they will actually like just clean themselves up. Ooh, fan shell clams, they're everywhere! Look at them! They are this flattened clam. And they actually stick themselves like their food is at the bottom. Part of their body will be sticking out. When it's fully submerged, right, then they will just open up a bit and they do filter feeding. So now when the tide has receded, all of them like kind of pops out. For soft body creatures, they are a bit more vulnerable because you know they are just so full of moisture and they might dry out in the sun. So you usually find them in seagrass area where they just hide under the shade of the sea grasses, or they will just be buried in the sand. And all these animals they're just trying to tide through that one hour-ish window period of intertidal zone. So seagrass, uh, they provide shelter because they're anchored to the ground. So unlike the seaweed, right, where they will just float with the current, if the current is strong, seagrass, they'll, they'll just be around here and the anchor actually provide a good shelter for animals. And do you know seagrass, they're like food for the dugongs? So dugongs are known as sea cow. Cow eat grass. So sea cow eats seagrass. Something there, there's something there, there's something there. I have... No freaking idea. I think it's a snake or sea snake or something. Careful. If you move this way, I have no idea what to do. Oh, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. There was a snake like creature there, but it's not a snake. It's probably like a snake eel or a moray eel. I can't really tell because the water is a bit murky. Eels are not snakes. Eels, they are actually like modified fish, which, you know, have this long body and, you know, tapered ends so they can swim around in the water properly. While snakes, they are reptiles. So sea snakes, they are usually not found so up short. It's like all the way down into the sea. That's what's called a sea snake. Then why were you panicking? I don't know, I was moving. It just came out of nowhere. It sprung into action. Well, the tides are coming back and everything is submerged, so we can't really see anything. That's it for Marine Treasure Hut Part 3. Goodbye, guys. Just keep thinking.